In this module, we are talking about uniform circular motion. And basically what that means is that you have an object that is moving in a circle and it is moving at a constant speed. So if it is moving at a constant speed, that means that the net torque on it is going to be zero because what we learned in the last chapter is that if we have a net torque on an object, um, it's going to be experiencing a rotational acceleration. Um, and that means that the speed is also going to be changing and that's not going to be true if I have a uniform rotational motion or uniform circular motion. Now, they, he also gives you on um, second page of the module, he has this drawing um, on there and it may be that this is causing you a bit of confusion because you may be looking at this and we know that the object is rotating around the circle in this direction. And he has some vectors marked on here. He has that if the object is up here where this dot is, he says that the velocity vector at this particular point in time is going off in this direction. Um, he also has an arrow pointing downward, and he says that that's the direction that the acceleration is in. Um, and therefore, that's also the direction that the force is in. And you may be looking at that going, where did that come from? Because almost always before, we've talked about, when we've talked about straight line motion, we've talked about um, velocity um, going one direction and acceleration either being the same direction or the exact opposite direction, depending on if the object was speeding up or if it was slowing down. But we've never seen anything that looks like this before. I want you to think about the object that you were twirling in experiment 7.1. Um, it's going around your head, and so what forces are actually acting on that object? Well, obviously gravity is acting on it because we are on the surface of the earth. If you stop twirling it, um, the object's gonna fall to the ground. So that one's pretty obvious. What is the only other force that's acting on it? Well, the only other thing that can possibly be acting on that is the string that's attached to it. And the string, and you've probably noticed this already, hopefully, but you can't push something with a string, okay? You can pull something with a string, but you can't push something that's attached to a string. So the only way to be exerting any other force besides gravity on this object that's being twirled in a circle around your head is through the tension in the string. And the tension in the string is pulling inward. Um, so that is, in this case, the source of the force that's acting on this object. It's the tension in the string that's pulling inward. And so the, we know from Newton's second law that the acceleration is in the same direction as the force. So if the force is pulling inward, then the acceleration is pulling inward as well. Now, one thing that I wanna point out here, if the string suddenly broke while you were twirling it, what would have happened? Well, if the object was at this particular point in its journey around the circle and the, the string suddenly breaks, does the object keep moving in a circle? No, because when the force is removed, the object is going to move in a straight line. That's what Newton's first law tells us. So at this particular point in the circle, the object would fly off in a straight line that direction if the string suddenly broke. What if the object were here? Well, at that particular point in time, um, again, the velocity is going this direction so if you cut the string when it's over here it's going to fly off in a straight line and so that's where all these other vectors in the bottom picture on that page are coming from that he's talking about if the object is here at this point in time it's moving this way so if you cut the string it will go that way if it's here it's going to go off this direction now you can actually try this um, in fact, I, in one of the uh, physical science classes that I teach, I actually have students twirl something in a circle around their head, and while they're twirling it, I have them cut the string. Now, you have to be careful where you do that, obviously, so that when the thing goes flying, you're not gonna damage anything or any one that might be in the path of that object. But if it's a lightweight object and you make sure everybody's out of the way, you can safely do that, twirl it around your head, cut the string, and see which way it flies. And you will see that the object is going to um, to fly off um, tangential to the circle, okay? Now, 
um, the equation for centripetal force, which is the force that is called um, when something is moving in a circle like that, the equation for that, for centripetal force, is um, we usually use F sub C, for C meaning centripetal force, is the mass of the object that's being twirled times the velocity squared over the radius. And so what kind of Newton, or what kind of um, units am I gonna have there? Well, if mass is in kilograms and velocity is in meters per second, and then that squared is gonna be meters squared per second squared. And then if I keep things consistent, if my radius is in meters, one of these meters will cancel out. So this one will cancel out and this will become just a regular meter. So that gives me a kilogram meter per second squared. And you should recognize that as our old friend, the Newton, which is the same unit that we've been using all along for force, okay? So same, same units, it's just that the equation for force looks a little bit different. What we're used to seeing is that force equals mass times acceleration. So if I apply that to this equation, then what that means is that if this is the mass, that means that this part right here has to be equal to acceleration. So that's where the second equation comes from. And centripetal acceleration is equal to the velocity squared over r, okay? Um, most of the problems that you are working concerning those are really not difficult. It's um, pretty much a simple, you know, plug it in and chug out the answer type of problem. So I'm not going to work any of those problems for you today. Um, I think they're pretty straightforward. But hopefully um, our conversation today will just help you um, understand that this, the inward force um, on a, an object in circular motion is a centripetal force. And that is the object that's causing the motion because as you can see, there's isn't anything else acting on that particular object.